But how, as a foreign invader, would he ever win the hearts and minds of his new subjects? Alexander understood the power of the visual techniques used by Darius, but he had to come up with an image all of his own. Archaeologists had always known how Alexander had won the war. But what still remained a mystery was how he had planned to win the peace. Where did his image come from, the image he would use to win hearts and minds? The obvious place to start the search was where he had planned his campaign, his homeland, Macedonia. Macedonia is now part of modern Greece, but back in the 4th century BC, it was an independent kingdom with a warlike reputation. The problem for the archaeologists was that little remained of Alexander's palaces. They'd already been destroyed. So they turned to the royal tombs underground. Here again, it was a similar story of destruction. Tomb after tomb was discovered, but each one had already been ransacked by raiders. Then, in 1978, a team of Greek archaeologists at last found one that was intact. It was one of the great archaeological discoveries of our time. They came across a tunnel leading deep underground. It revealed the face of a tomb, still intact. The moment the tomb opened, it was like a dream. I had no idea of the significance of our discovery. It was just a miracle. They had discovered the secret tomb of Philip of Macedon, Alexander's father. Its walls were still covered with the traces of magnificent paintings, and what awaited them inside was a huge treasure trove. The centerpiece was a gold sarcophagus with the symbol the Macedonian king. He was surrounded by incredible riches, the riches of a king. They showed he was a man of exquisite taste. These are really the most beautiful objects of their kind we have ever discovered. These were rich trappings, but perhaps what you'd expect from a great dynasty. Lots of gold, but what light did it shed upon the secrets of Alexander's success? Well, then, amid the dust and debris on the tomb floor, the archaeologists picked up something which at first sight looked rather inconspicuous. It was a delicately crafted ivory carving. As they dug deeper, they found more. They were tiny fragments, most less than an inch long. Pieced together, they formed a hunting scene. But as they examined them more closely, one of the faces stood out. This was the face that would appear on busts and paintings for hundreds of years throughout the Mediterranean. Now, 
Now suddenly a face emerged of someone we recognized. It was the face of a real person. We had discovered the image of the man who was at the center of ultimate power. They were looking at the face of Alexander the Great. And this was the earliest image of him ever discovered. It was also the first lifelike representation of a king. Up until now, kings had been portrayed by characterless depictions, created to a formula. But this marked the moment of another artistic revolution, the birth of the political portrait. As a portrait, it really captures his political power and strength. It marks the very moment a new artistic idea was born. But the most significant aspect of this little ivory head was when it was made. It was placed in this tomb. That means that it was made before Philip died and before Alexander became king. In other words, archaeologists realized for the first time that Alexander's image had been designed for him before he fought a single battle against the Persians. Between them, Philip and Alexander had already come up with a winning image, an image to take on the world. But how exactly would Alexander exploit the power of this image and portray himself as a leader strong enough to unite an empire? The answer to that was found buried under tons of lava at the foot of a volcano. The volcano that buried the Roman town of Pompeii, Mount Vesuvius. The Romans loved Greek art, and in one of the villas in Pompeii was a mosaic, the copy of an original Macedonian painting from Alexander's time. It's now in the Archaeological Museum of Naples. The mosaic depicts a famous battle in which Alexander finally defeated the Persian armies. This is Alexander charging full tilt into the thick of the battle. His eyes are fixed on his mortal enemy, the Persian king. Alexander is shown in the heat of action, leading his troops, spear in hand. He wears no helmet, his hair flying back, a fearless hero leading from the front. And the impact of this image is even greater when you look across to the other side of the mosaic. Look at the face of the great Persian king. It's a study of panic and fear. He can't get away quick enough. And so the whole of this political poster offers us a clear choice. Do you go for the brave heart or the coward? The hero or the villain? It's a collision of values in which Alexander is predestined for victory.